At this point in the texturing process, we have some important decisions to make. Is this skull going to be really old? Is it going to be a brand new skull? Is this skull decorated with interesting bronze and gold decals? Maybe we should put a ruby ingrained in the head or something intricate like that. There's all kinds of different ways you can go. There's all sorts of different designs that you can make for this particular skull. And the question is, which design is going to work best? Now, you might think that the straightforward answer, when you don't know, is just to go to the clients or the supervisor and ask their opinion. And yes, you are hired by the clients or you're hired by the studio and hence the supervisor to give them what they want. That's true. However, that doesn't always mean that they're going to give you the right answer. That doesn't always mean that you're going to have a complete picture based off of what someone else tells you. And so because you're the one with the pen in hand, you're the one placing the textures on the skull, that means that the more artistic weight you can carry or be capable of carrying, the better. It means that you shouldn't be reliant on the client or the supervisor to always give you the right answer. And so by asking yourself the right questions, you're going to be able to arrive at the right answers when it comes to the best textures that belong on that skull. So ask yourself some of these questions. What is the story? That skull is sitting on the table. So why? Why is that skull there in the first place? How does that fit into what's happening with everything else around it? What's the story behind that skull? What's the story behind everything else in the scene? And how does that skull fit within the narrative? That's a very important question, and that'll guide many of your decisions. If, let's say, we have a very old, like ancient-looking skull, there's probably a reason why it's an old ancient skull, and it probably has to do something with the story, as why that skull might be there. And even if you don't have a backstory that's given to you, it's useful to think of that skull in some sort of backstory that you invent so that your decisions have a bit of meaning to them. Also, are there any cultural references? It wouldn't be very appropriate, let's say, to pick some sort of Egyptian sandstone for these pillars if everything else is meant to have, let's say, a Nordic style. And so are you being sensitive to the color palettes, the materials, the actual things in this scene when it comes to different cultures and different motifs that you see throughout general art and design? You have to be aware of those things. Because like I said, you can make things clash accidentally if you're not aware of the context, the cultural context of the color palette as well as the materials of everything else around it. Also, what is the object's relationship to the rest of the environment? And this is kind of what I just talked about with the cultural references. But as another example, uh, if we have, let's say, this sand down here, and let's say we are texturing this iron ring around the tower. Well, as we're texturing, we have just that individual object a lot of times. And we might not always think about where that individual object lives within the scene. So when I'm saying, what's the surrounding environment? What I literally mean is like, you have that one object, where does it live in relationship to the other objects? And does that affect the textures that you put on let's say the iron ring. In this case, it would. The iron ring is right next to sand, so that means it probably makes sense to have a layer of sand so that that iron ring can interact visually with the sand dunes around it. Also, should the prop take the viewer's attention? We talked about this a little bit in Shading Techniques 1. If you make, let's say, a bright red glass, and you want the viewer's attention on the shot to be on the tower, then that glass, the color of that glass, might take somebody's attention away when it's not supposed to. If, let's say, we go with the whole bejeweled skull idea, and so we put some rubies and crazy gold uh, decals and things like that on the skull, 
that's going to take the viewer's attention and guide it towards the skull because it has more interesting things going on. Even the materials you add have to work nicely with the lights. And so as an example, if we have a bunch of metallic highlights along this skull, that's going to create a lot of visual contrast around that skull and it's going to naturally take the viewer's attention and draw it towards this particular item. And so back around to the story, is that something you want? Should the viewer's attention be on that skull? Or should it be on the tower? Or maybe you can make the attention of the skull secondary to the tower. But the point is, you want to be conscious about these things. Where are you trying to take people when they look at this image? And is this particular thing that you're working on something that should support the whole image? Or is it something that should be the main focus? If you've never thought about some of these things before, then I challenge you to really think about it as you practice with these individual props. This will really help take the whole scene and make everything feel like they belong in the same room. And if you have a client or you have some sort of team or a supervisor that doesn't know exactly what they want, then it's up to you to show them exactly what they need. And by doing that, you're ultimately going to become a better artist as a result. Being an artist is very much about the questions you ask yourself. It's more about the mindset that you take on, and that's the difference between somebody who is able to make decisions and push things forward to where they need to be versus someone who needs their hand held the entire way. So those are some important ideas to keep in mind for the future. And this is just general advice, whether you're texturing or doing effects for things, Whatever it is that you're doing in 3D, these questions are extremely relevant to becoming a great artist. In the next video, let's apply various layers of triplanar projections as well as manually paint in some information with the skull.